Hey friends, Doug Addison here. Welcome to Spirit Connection. This is Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018. And I'm excited uh, to bring a new prophetic word and an experience I had at Yom Kippur. And can't wait to unpack it for you. Got my team with me. If you're watching live, we've got people in the chat room that can help uh, with your questions. Not doing dream interpretation or anything like that, but you can chat in your questions to us and uh, also be praying as we do this because this is going around the world whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay or listening to it on iTunes. Be sure to follow me on uh, social media. Facebook is The Doug Addison. Instagram and Twitter is Doug T. Addison. And also my website, DougAddison.com. And I'm just so, uh, feel I just feel the presence of God is, is strong right now. So let's just jump right into things. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for your goodness, that you're operating outside of time, especially right now. There's no, there's no restraints in you. So we ask that you move right now with this word tonight, with the words of the, and our time together. I pray right now for those in need would receive miraculous things, healings, uh, that the visitations would begin to happen, that happens around when we do these types of things and release the anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we do this the first Wednesday of every month, and then we'll have the replay up uh, probably tomorrow, and and um, I'll be releasing the prophetic word in writing, I believe this Friday the 5th, so watch for that at my website. Uh, here's the prophetic word. I had a visitation on Yom Kippur. That's the highest holy day of the Jewish calendar. I don't celebrate any of those, uh, any of the Jewish holidays or anything like that, except for times of prayer. I also take time to have communion. That's what this is. Uh, I do that every day anyway. But I'm just saying the Lord is moving right now. I heard this. Psalm 1611 is for right now. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence and eternal um, eternal pleasures at your right hand. The Lord is opening the path of life to you to bring this long-awaited release of supernatural joy. I tell you, I've already started getting it. It's a drink of God's joy, even though things don't look right, even though you still might have bad days, even though you're still going through it. Take the drink of joy the Lord's giving right now. Even though things appear difficult on the outside, God is working beneath the scenes and creating a path for you. Watch for pathways of life. That's what this verse is. Write that verse down. Begin to pray it in. Psalm 1611. His joy is going to open up in the midst of struggles and trials. Don't look at the surface as God is doing something beneath the surface. I had a dream just this morning. I got in a, I was in a high-rise building. I got in an elevator to go to the top floor. There was only two buttons, two and 22. And so it didn't matter what I pushed, I would go down to the basement. And it, that's where things were revealed in the lower level, this dream just this morning. If you look at my daily prophetic word for today, God's revealing deep things right now. So this is what happened is Daniel 2.22 is a, is a verse that I pray and decree every day is the spirit of truth by God's spirit. He will reveal deep and hidden things. So I, I tell you, this is fresh. I didn't even include that in my notes. I'm just sharing it with you out of my journal that God is opening something right now. On the Jewish holiday Yom Kippur, which was September 19th, through the 20th. I was awakened with a prophetic dream that morning and the Lord gave me this dream about the coming year. Here's the dream. I call it the dream of the narrow door. In the dream, I was standing in front of a huge sliding glass uh, door and it led out to a place where God wanted us all to go for this year. There was a beautiful pool of water. There were trees. It was just gorgeous outside. Sun was shining. But the problem was the door would only open it up for someone to squeeze through, just a person to squeeze through. But I knew that we were moving to a new season and we had to move all of our stuff through this. It just was not going to fit. So when I woke up, I heard the Lord say, the doorway to this new year that we're about to enter through looks like this. You will not be able to take the things from the past season into the new season. 
It's going to be a narrow time of transition, but it will be worth it all. It's not like you're going to, you know, that's not a bad word. Don't try to interpret anything bad into that. The Lord's just saying, you can't take the old into the new. So I had this encounter that morning. When I got up that morning on October, uh, excuse me, on September 19th, I usually have a an encounter anyway, but I usually have a special one on days like Yom Kippur. And I got uh, an encounter with the Lord. Now, here's how it normally works with me anyway. Uh, my Bible opens to strategic places. Now, this is new for me. This is like going through that new glass door. Year, uh, last year, year, maybe two years ago, I was different. I was a seer. I would just see things. Then I'd look it up in the Bible and uh, things shifted for me. I see it in the Bible first, like this is my encounters Bible. It would open up and first, then I would have these interactive visions that are so detailed that I have to use dictation software on my back, on my MacBook to capture them. And so my Bible opened to Jeremiah 6.16. Write that down, Jeremiah 6.16. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient past. Ask for the good way and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. And uh, But some people said, we will not walk in it. Now, this is interesting because I don't know about you, but I want to enter into the Lord's rest. That's where you get more done with less effort. And so as I entered into the Spirit for this encounter, I was standing at these crossroads in Jeremiah 6.16. And it was a vision like, it's hard to describe, it just happened. And uh, there were very different directions we could go. You know, there were paths going different ways and roads. Uh, and uh, Jesus was standing next to me and he said, choose your pathway of life. And I asked, you know, I was about to ask where I should go, but he said this to me. He says, I want you to choose. There's all kinds of choices for this year. And as I looked at, at many of the pathways and roads, some were well-traveled, some looked familiar, some looked fun. You know, there were so many of them. But then there was a mountain next to me that went up and there was a almost hidden sign that said ancient path. It was very narrow. The path that went up, it was very narrow. And the Lord saw that I was drawn to the ancient path and he nodded in agreement. And he said that I've offered the ancient path to many people, but few people choose it. They say, I don't want to walk in it because it's too uncomfortable, it looks narrow, it looks too hard, Lord. But as we started up the journey, we went up this ancient path. It led up this mountain. I was surprised at how easy it was, actually. When I started, it felt light. Uh, you know, it wasn't difficult at all once I got going. And we were able to go, we had to go single file because it was narrow. And then when we got to the top, there was a narrow gate up there. And this was the... The verse, when I opened my Bible to this, it was Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many, <clears throat> and many enter through it into the broad one. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few find it. The Lord said, this is the year that I'm going to open the ancient paths that lead to this narrow gate. And this... This is the narrow gate that's going to lead you to new life. And I'm not just talking about salvation here. I'm just talking about a renewal happening in your life. And the Lord said, hardly anybody chooses this path. And I was wondering why, because once we got up there, it wasn't hard at all. And it was easy to think. It was easy to see. I could breathe and hear clearly. And I was standing enjoying this moment. And then suddenly the encounter actually ended. And I went into some other things. But the next morning, it was still Yom Kippur. It starts at sundown to sundown. September 20th, I got up at 4 a.m. as I usually do. as having my quiet time. Suddenly, during my encounter, uh, during my morning encounter, the Lord took me right back into the other one, into the one I had just been in. And we had continued the next morning. And I had chosen the ancient path. I was standing in front of this narrow gate. And the Lord was waiting for me as my Bible opened to Isaiah 35, verse 8. Write it down, Isaiah 35, 8. And a highway will be there, and it will be called the way of holiness. And it will be for those who walk in that way. 
the unclean will not journey on it. The wicked fools will not be allowed on it and be allowed to go on it. But I tell you, I'm standing now with the Lord and he had handed me a key in this encounter. And he, it was a physical, it wasn't physical, it was a spiritual thing. And I looked, I looked at the, the, the key and it, it actually fit the gate in front of me, which said the way to holiness. The, the Isaiah 35, 8, way to holiness was right in front of me. And it was leading into a heavenly uh, highway uh, and um, that seemed to interact with earth at the same time. Uh, it's part of on earth as it is in heaven, I guess. Then the Lord said to me, Listen, I'm calling my people, many people, to walk on the highway of holiness, but they must first choose the ancient path. They must go through the narrow gate and discover the way of holiness. That's a path for this year. And these are the ones who've laid down their lives, who've died to their own desires. These are the ones, if you haven't done that yet, it's time to right now. These are the ones who've suffered, been going through suffering and have uh, suffered losses it's about to shift and open up. And so I was shocked that there was only a few people on the way of holiness once I got up there. And I knew that many people uh, have been talking about holiness. I've heard about it, you know, stories and messages about holiness, but few had uh, obtained it because it's not through works. And it's about learning to love others as we love ourselves. And I'm going to open this up for you in just a minute where the, the Lord told me, the way for this. Now, watch for the Lord to open ancient paths for you and be willing this year to take the narrow gate uh, and uh, not the wide one or the easy one. And you'll get to be able to cross. I tell you, you'll be able to cross over into a new time of revelation and restoration. Now, listen, the ancient path, here's what it means. It's not the old anointings. It's not the previous moves of God. That isn't, it's not what that means. It's actually something new that the Lord wants to open up, that he has saved the ancient time for now. And this is something new that has been hidden till now. So Jesus reveals his strategy. If you want to look, because it, the, the gate is in, in Matthew 7. If you turn to Matthew 7, I'll just unpack something for you right now. It's amazing that Jesus was talking about so much. It, it's so cool to look in context and see what it precedes the gate, the narrow gate we see, the narrow door, whatever it's called, in Matthew 7, 13. So if we look at the beginning, Matthew 7, 1, Jesus said this. He, turned, he, he says, listen, here is the steps that you'll need to take for this year. Do not judge. Matthew 7, 1, do not judge and you will not be judged. So Get healed of judgments. I've been calling people to step out of judgments because when you do, suddenly you'll be able to hear the Lord. And that's what clouds us up here. People wonder how I'm able to hear prophetic words, a daily word. It's because I stop judging and I repent what I do judge. Matthew 7, 7 is the next step. Ask, seek, and knock. We need to get healed of thinking that God is going to open the door for us. Listen, read this at Matthew 7, 7. Ask it, it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. But first, listen, we're sitting on the couch waiting for God to open the door. He'll open this door, but you have to ask, seek and knock, which is a proactive step. So we need to actually uh, take a step and do something proactive and not just sit back and wait. Yeah, there is a time to wait, but right now, move forward and see what happens. So we go through that Matthew 7, 7 door. Then we go to Matthew 7, 10. And this is where Jesus says, the Father is the giver of good gifts. And this is so important. We need to get healed of our understanding who the Father is. He's not mean. He's not angry. And he wants to give you good gifts. Then we hit Matthew 7, 12. And Jesus said this. Do unto others that you would have them do to you. So we need to get healed of our unloving behavior. So walk through these things. Then we hit the narrow door in Matthew 7, 13. So people have asked me, how do I do this? I just, I'm laying out for you right now is get healed of your judgments. Um, get up and be proactive and seek, ask, seek and knock. Understand that the Father is the giver of good gifts. Get healed of anything that that might um, 
<clears throat> be like, you know, any unhealed baggage in that area about leaders and, and uh, things like that. Also, step into the time right now to treat people as you'd like to be treated. Now, this is now I'm going out of the world. And then step forward because the door is going to open, that narrow door. And once you go through this process, then Matthew 7, 15 is going to kick in. It says, that, that is, watch out for false prophets and you'll know the fruit of a person. Because what's going to happen, once you step into this place, you're going to have discernment like you've never had before. And you'll know a tree by its fruit. I want you to study Matthew 7 and look at this process and pull things out because this is the season we're in right now. We're in the season of going through these gates, getting rid of the judgments, stepping into this new time and watching the Lord opening things up for us and being able to increase and heighten our discernment. Now, this is important because most people are afraid of being deceived. You know, once you step into this and you start letting go of these things, you're going to find a new level of spiritual discernment that you haven't had before. And so I want to pray right now that God will activate these things. Lord, we pray to heal us of our judgments, heal us of anything that's been stopping us from making decisions. The Matthew 7, 7 door, ask, seek, and knock. Lord, heal us of any negative images of, of the Father. Heal, of us, heal us of anything we have unloving towards anyone else. Uh, show us how to love others as we would want to be loved now, Lord, open the path of, of life, the pathway of life, that gate, and increase our spiritual discernment right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's, this is a process. I want you to go back through this, write this down, look it up, and go through this process because this is something that's going to get you quicker into this year. The year actually started, the new year on, on the Jewish calendar started in September, uh, I don't, I'm on both calendars. I tell you, it doesn't matter because it takes a couple months for things to line up in the spirit, you know, the angels to be reassigned to you. So first of the year uh, in January, it's going to be, I'll, I'll release a prophetic word and do an online training. It's going to really be powerful because I've gotten so much revelation. I can't even fit it into a book. So we're going to be releasing that in January as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Here, I want to give you an update on the California Revival. Last March, the Lord brought Lou Engel, myself, and Keith Ferrante together in unity, representing the prophets. Now, this is because a, um, an intercessor and worship leader, um, Mondell Matthews, actually, really great guy. Uh, he, If you want to hear about this, you can Google Mondo Matthews, Doug Addison, and you'll see uh, a podcast that I did with him where he talks about the dream. He had a dream last, probably earlier this year, that a prophet was standing on a stage and he was a combination of Lou Engel, Doug Addison, Keith Ferrante, representing Northern California, Central California, and Southern California. And they all came together in one man and one voice, calling people to a 40-day fast. And so I tell you, remember the day in February when my phone rang and Lou Engel called me, told me about this dream and my healing that I had been trying to get over my immune system came the next day in February. I tell you, the power of the Lord came. Lou Engel, Keith Ferrante and I came together in unity. We called a 40-day fast. It actually extended to 50 days once we got into it. And it was so powerful. And here was the thing. It started March 1st and went through April 18th. Maybe you were part of it. Well, it was a different fast than normal. You could, there was three options. God was calling us to fast and pray over the revival in California because God, in the past, God has used California and the West Coast to spark many revivals that have gone around the world. The Jesus People Movement uh, happened in California. There was other things, Azusa Street, uh, revival happened in California. But there was just a lot of things in the past. So we felt, in fact, the Lord gave us the word. California was the key to the world. So we called the fast and pray to break the things that were holding back judgments against California, the West Coast. And so here's what happened. We, we called people to pray between March 1st and April 18th, but it was an unusual one. We were, 
we were asking people um, either to, to I was, uh, we all three could, could call what we felt the Lord saying. Mine was fasting from negativity and Keith was fasting to joy. And, and Lou, of course, was fasting with food optional. So it didn't matter how you did it. What mattered is that you got into the joy of the Lord. And we ended the fast in Santa Maria. That's where our office is located. And the Lord gave me some words years ago that there'd be a move of God and God started to move there. And so it was very, very powerful. But then, you know, nothing seemed to happen after that. And fast forward four months later from April, on August 11th, suddenly in one of my encounters in the morning, I saw the book of revival for California sitting closed on an altar. Now, this is the first time I've encountered it. I knew there's a book, and I'm going to tell you about books. I'm going to explain this to you. And I had never seen it in a heavenly encounter before. I knew there was a book of revival. I saw that last year, 2017. The book of revival, it's not open yet at all, but I saw it opening in the future and some of the things that was around it. That's the big revival that's coming, the Billion Soul Harvest. That's the Ezekiel 34 lost sheep revival that's coming. But listen, let me tell you what happened in August. Every time I would try to pray over it, it was really strange. But first, let me give you a quick teaching on books and scrolls in heaven. Now, once I tell you this, if you don't know it already, you're going to start seeing it throughout the Bible. Psalm 139.16 says, All the days of your life were ordained or written in your book before one of them came to be. So we all have a book of life. Hebrews 10, 7 actually tells us that Jesus had a book. He says, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll, which is the same as a book. I have come to do your will, my God. So Jesus had a book to fulfill while he was on earth, which he did. <clears throat> we all have books of life in heaven, and they get opened at Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, this time of year. They get opened for our, our, our year. That's what uh, actually is traditionally what the Jewish people believe and uh, the prophets, many of the prophets that I've known, I encounter it the same way. I'm just telling you, here's what happens. God can speak to people through these heavenly books. They're not physical books, they're spiritual. It's like having a dream. That's not a physical thing, but yet it can change your life, right? Say with a vision. This is similar to these spiritual books. Ezekiel 3, 1 through 3, he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat the scroll, then go speak to my people, Israel. Here, it could be taking in something spiritually and then getting revelation from it. David got the plans from heaven, which were at very similar to a spiritual book, and he wrote them down and gave them to his son, Solomon on how to build the temple years later. We can have books over nations. We know that in Daniel 10, 21, the angel Gabriel gave him the book of Revelation for the Old Testament. It was called the book of truth. This was for the whole nations. And then we go to the book of Revelation in the New Testament. John wrote the book, of course, that will reveal the end times and also a strategy on how heaven works. Now listen, Jesus said this. He told stories that were, he told parables, which were like dreams. They were like night dreams. Parables were, were things that he said, this, the kingdom of heaven is like. He was trying to, he trying to liken it to something on earth, you know, trying to pull it in. And so I believe that the message in the book of Revelation is actually gonna happen. It is gonna happen, but I'm gonna use it for a moment as an archetype or as a blueprint for how the books of heaven work so I can help you understand. But here, before I get into that, the book of Revelation is way misunderstood. Let me say this. You can tell because for years, ever since I came into the kingdom, you know, for the, when I first came to Jesus for the third time, a long time ago, I've been, you know, I remember the late great planet Earth and all these, you know, Jesus is coming in uh, 2000, or, you know, uh, um, 88 reasons why it's eight, not coming in 88 and why he came come in here, come in there, and he never comes. I believe it's this right here. You could read this in Revelation 10. I saw a mighty angel coming down from heaven and robed in a cloud with a rainbow 
over his head and his face was like the sun and his legs were like blazing pillars and he was holding a little scroll, a little book. So he had this little book open. He had one foot planted on the sea and one on the land. Now listen, then he gave, then <clears throat> he gave a loud shout and a roar like a lion. And when he shouted, the voices of seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write and I heard the voice from heaven say, seal it up, seal up the seven, you know, seal up that revelation that just got spoke out of that little book from the seven thunders. And it was interesting. That's why we're not getting the, the correct interpretation. I believe like the second, second coming, I believe is going to happen. Absolutely. But even Jesus said, he says, I don't even know. The angels don't know. Only the father knows because things have to line up. And things that we need to understand are hidden away in these spiritual books in heaven that we can get revelation. And he's revealing the mysteries of these things right now. So that's a fast forward back to my prophetic word over this. That's just to help you understand. There's a lot of symbolic understanding that we can gain from the book of Revelation that applies to the future prophecy, but also Think of it this way, like Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like. An example, uh, Revelation 3, um, 3.20, there's a door, Jesus said. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I will come in and eat with him and him with me. But that's not a physical door. It's a spiritual door. And we know that we've always equated that with, with um, salvation. But I want to tell you, he spoke it to believers. He spoke it to the church. Read back, uh, Revelation 3. I invite him in my revelation three door every day and he eats with me and you know, in other words like the scroll with ezekiel we're sharing revelation or getting things done that's an example of what i'm about to say revelation 21 describes the river of life the tree of life the temple of heaven gives us understanding of things in the, in heaven and on earth and the flow of the spirit and the healing that can happen so for purposes of understanding the books of heaven, of what I'm about to talk about, because I'm going to talk about the book of revival for California. And so Revelation 4 through 6, chapter 4 through 6, contains mysteries about the future. I want to make sure I believe that. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. Listen to me. I'm saying that we can also gain understanding of how these spiritual books, books work. Because the first thing that happens once, once John walked through the Revelation 3, 8 and the Revelation 3, 20 door, he was given the key of David, so to speak. He had authority to be able to do this. Once he opened the door, then Revelation 4, 1 is very interesting. The angel says, come up here, a door. Suddenly a door was up there. It was up higher. Come up here, the voice said, and I will show you what is to take place after this. I go through that every day. I come up, of, rise above my own issues, my own stuff, and I go through, so to speak, a Revelation 4, one type of door to gain access into the higher level things. Now, open your Bible, friends. Take a look at it. What happens in Revelation 5? Well, first of all, the first thing that happens later in Revelation 4, once he goes through the door, is worship breaks out. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. There's worship going on right now. And then Revelation 5 comes and he sees the Lamb's book of life and he wept over it. He's trying to get the book open. We have a book of life. And Ezekiel shows us that Israel had a book of life, had a book. And Jesus had a book of life. So what happens is sometimes we need to weep over these things. Other times we just need to labor over them. Other times the Lord's just going to give it to you. But here... It's what's happening every year. A book of life gets opened over you, but also over places like the California Book of Life. Now, that's in Revelation 5. You see it, read it. You don't have to you don't look at all the details of that. This is just a this is just a symbolic type that's going on. Now, check out what happens immediately in Revelation 6. There's seven seals. There's curses that come before you can open the book. And just as we have a book of life and we're called to do something new, this explains why and how we could possibly inherit generational curses or ties against our generational calling. Because when we get a book, like 
when I began to move in the calling that was on my family, my oldest sister, I'm the youngest, my older sister was about to pass away. I went and I prayed her out of a coma uh, in a nursing home and she came to and she, well, she lived after that. In fact, uh, something happened with the calling on my family, it came to me. Then I had to deal with the curses that came with it, but I wasn't aware of this a few years ago, I'm telling you. I was not aware of it, I wish I would have known this. I didn't realize the seals, just like the seals of judgment, might be against your calling. And so that's why we have generational healing. That's why we have ministries, you know, that, that can help us walk through these things. So this is found in Revelation 5 and 6. Now, just as we have a book of life, you know, and, and we can break these ceilings, uh, these things off. And again, believe me, I believe the book of Revelation has its message to be about the future that will stand. Jesus will return. Uh, not saying that. But the case now, fast forward with me, okay? Are you with me? I just, I just gave you a crash course in the deep end of the courts of heaven. I'm understanding the books and getting them open. Now, the case of the book of California's Book of Revival. I had never seen it until August. Now, I've been weeping over revival for California because the Lord told me it was the key to the world. Then three prophets come together. We are... We call the world to weep. Then suddenly, a few months later, it's now sitting closed in heaven. And I see for the first time in September, I see three seals of judgment that's holding it back. And these were the things that many people judge California. This is the book of revival for California. This means it's got names of people in here. It's got strategies to reach them. California is a strange place. You know, California, I've heard... Some would say this is that California isn't already another planet, you know, and sometimes California could be a moon orbiting around that planet and especially some unusual people. But the Lord loves everybody. So listen, in this book, there was three seals that needed to be broken. These were judgments that Christians and the church, maybe even if people had against groups of people in California, that had different lifestyles that were contrary to the beliefs of Christians, different political beliefs, tattooed and pierced, different political parties. Did I say that? Yeah, gay and lesbians. There's all these different people that the Lord wants to bring in. Now, this is easier for me to understand because I'm an evangelist. I'm out there all the time. I live in Los Angeles. I do outreach, things like that. I've been around. I've seen pretty much everything, honestly. So I'm not shocked. And at these things. In fact, the Lord wants to use you to be able to reach people in these places, in these lifestyles. He wants to use us, right? But now, these people are sealed up in the book of revival that the Lord wants to bring. Then I, I knew that we'd need the prayer, the weeping, that we would knew what we need to get over those, um, over those things. And so, during the month of September, I met with a group of prophets in Northern California along with Keith Ferrante, who was one of the guys that the Lord called in that dream, we called a meeting. We had a meeting in Vacaville in September, a private meeting, and I opened this revelation for the first time to anybody, and we wept, we prayed, we broke the, we repented and broke the curses over those, the three seals. Now, they didn't um, <clears throat> remove immediately, but within a week, I saw seal one break. I saw seal two break. I saw seal three break. And then the book was sitting unsealed, but still closed in the altar of heaven in, the, in late September. I'm just telling you what happened. I'm so excited that on September 29th, yeah, just a few days ago, I saw the Lord open the book of revival for California. And he said, and he said to this, this is the key to revival for the world, just like the Jesus people, just like Azusa Street Revival. He said, get ready because the book has now opened. Now, I don't know what's happened. It's only been a few days, uh, but we need to get the intercessors. We need to get you to get a hold of this and begin to pray and ask the Lord for those names written in the book of revival to come into the kingdom, to come to the Lord. We need to pray for fresh strategies of the Lord on how to reach these people. We need to pray that, that heaven comes to earth now for this. These are the Ezekiel 
34 lost and wounded sheep. You could Google Doug Addison, Ezekiel 34. You'll see a lot of encounters I've had. But I'm so excited this has happened. So now we want to pray. Lord, we thank you for the book of life you've given each of us. And that it's now open. Our books of life are open right now for this year. They got open just within the last few weeks, the last few days even. And we thank you, Lord, that you're calling us to something new. You're calling us to that narrow time of transition because others have said no to this. We're sitting in something so, so big right now. Lord, we pray for the revelation in our books for ourselves to be able to step into this new season. We pray right now, Lord, for the names in the book of Revival for California. We speak those names before the throne and say, bring them into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Bring them into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Bring them into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Also, release strategies to reach our own kids or anyone that might be part of this. Bring us an undivided heart. Lord, bring us love. We call the Ezekiel 34 sheep to come now in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Wow. I'm telling you. God's about to do something new. I'm so excited because I've wept over this book. We knew that the, from, from uh, um, Revelation 5, we knew that, look and see what, what John did when he saw the book that couldn't be opened. He wept over it. And so I tell you, we're in a time right now that God wants to open things for us. And we need these new strategies. And uh, yeah, we... All right, DougAddison.com is my website. And be sure to check out my new free ebook if you haven't gotten it. It's called Four Keys to Change Your Life. It's totally free. And um, it's got some things that the Lord gave me for this season. If you did download it, read it. Take a look at it. Um, and um, <clears throat> as well, we're going to be doing a new online training this week. It's a workshop called Angels. Excuse me, it's not this week, this month. Angels and Demons, Releasing Blessings and Breaking Curses. It's Saturday, October 20th from 10 to noon. And it is a, there's a small charge, two hours of training. This is different than anything I've done. Now I overlap a little bit of my training, but this is a new, new wineskin, so to speak, for spiritual warfare. But it's not just prayer. This is how to break your finances open. This is how to break open things that maybe have been coming against you. This is how to go beyond just binding Satan, you know, and, and but now we want to loose the blessings. I'm going to go into some details. I'll be releasing the uh, video on this shortly and later on this week. You can get the early bird. It's normally $37 for the two hours to Q&A. Plus, I give you the notes. Uh, but for until Thursday night, now until Thursday night, it's $32. I jump on it if you're going to do it. Thursday at, at uh, right before midnight Pacific time. That'll go away. It'll go up to $37, and we'll, we'll be releasing the video a little bit later on. So you can do that right now, actually. Uh, there's a link, I believe, if you're on live. Consider giving to us. You know, we do these things free. You can go to DougAddison.com forward slash give or text the word. If you want to um, give by text, 45888 is the number. And text the word love, L-O-V-E, to 45888. You can give on your mobile form, uh, phone. If you partner with us, that's people who give every month. It just helps us, you know, because we, we reach people around the world. We train people how to hear God. We do as much as we can free. We, and so we have people who support us and help us. But we have, if you partner with us and give regularly, you have a special online private website that you can log into with some resources, videos, things that's not offered anywhere else. Also, our private Facebook mentoring group. I'm in there. We've got a partner coach, more than one. We have partner coaches who actually help. They've been trained by me to help pray and guide you through things that you need. Also, you get put on my prayer list. I have it right here. And you get put on my prayer list. And I pray over the partner names every day as I'm going into the court of heaven. And your name, uh, excuse me, you're, uh, you'll uh, get be part of a partner mentoring video that I do once a month. It goes to our partners only because we appreciate you. So consider becoming a partner. Just go to DougAddison.com forward slash give. Speaking of that, we have Pam, who is our partner, one of our partner coaches. 
We have Pam in the chat room, and I'm going to go over there right now and see if I can pull up some of the questions that she has. Hey, Pam, thank you so much for doing this and others, the whole Enlight team. Here's one from Stacy. Doug, how do you prophetically enter into the narrow gate? Well, I gave you some, uh, some examples uh, of it, but basically it's this. Anything that's, that's done spiritually, you do it through humility. Follow those steps that I talked about, which was get rid of judgment. So here's the answer to your question, Stacy. To get through the narrow gate, get rid of judgments. Become proactive in this season. That's Matthew 7. Seven. That's the first one is seven one. Second one is Matthew seven seven. Get proactive and begin to ask God to open the door for you, and He will. And then the third thing is to uh, understand God is not mean or mad. Get healed of your issues with the Father, like Jesus said. I believe it's right around Matthew seven ten. Get issue. Get healed of those issues. Receive the good good gifts from the Father. Also, love others as yourself. Jesus said that. He said, do unto others as you would do to yourself. And then he compares that to the same verse. He says, this is what the laws of the prophet hang on. That means that's love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. Same thing. And as you do that, this, you humble yourself, that's what's going to open the narrow gate for you. And you'll be able to uh, get greater revelation as you do. I hope that helps. Monique says, I feel other people's emotions as if they were my own. Is this a seer gift? Actually, it's a it's sort of like a seer gift, but it is a it's a revelation gift called discernment of spirits. You'll find it in First, first Corinthians twelve. You will find out how to use it in First Corinthians twelve. But Paul lists this as a gate as some of the gifts of the hearing hearing God. We go through this in my uh, online school called. Uh, Hearing the Voice of God Online Activation School, where we talk about those types of things because that's one of the misunderstood gifts. Those people who have this thing or you feel other people's emotions or uh, it's a discernment of spirits. Maybe you you feel like you can't trust people and then you know, you, you're you walking with this thing where you feel like you can't trust. It. That's, a, that's actually this discernment of spirits gift. And once I show you how to use it, it's powerful. I have it myself for the longest time. I felt kind of discouraged with this gift because everyone else given encouraging words and I was like yeah you're gonna die uh, anyway I'm not, that's a little extreme but uh, but the people with this gift actually you can learn to flip that around because you're seeing the plan of the enemy you can flip that around and bring the plan of the Lord and it's very powerful so here's one from Deborah Co. Uh, how do you love your family and friends who don't understand you well, Jesus did this. He, he modeled it for us that it's just unconditional love. First of all, you got to separate yourself out from feeling the rejection. Maybe they're not rejecting you personally. They're rejecting your beliefs. That's two different things. So if you can kind of separate yourself out, the fact that you're not getting rejected uh, by your friends and families, they're just rejecting your beliefs. And that's okay then once you make a peace with that in your heart, once you do that, then it's more easy to work with your friends and family because you can accept them. They look at it this way, like a bridge. You know, you come out, they come out, you meet in the middle. I remember sharing, you know, some of my uh, encounters that I have with people and I share and I had this, uh, one of my hair artists that had, and she was a Buddhist hair artist, I called her. Not the one I have now, but... Uh, she she was Buddhist. I went to her for a couple of years. She was in Beverly Hills. What a really wonderful lady. And so, uh, you know, I was not going to try to ram the gospel down her throat because I wanted to wait for the Lord to open the door. So one day she said to me that, um, she goes, you know, the temples that I had, the temples here in um, in the United States, her Buddhist temples, aren't like the ones that we had back in in. Uh, Thailand, and she said, I could see that loss in her heart. So I said, Wow, well, would you describe it to me? So I listened to her. And then it was at that moment she went, she became vulnerable. She went out halfway. I listened to her, honored her. I didn't tell her, turn her burn, my goodness. So I, then she looked at me. She said, So you're a Christian. What's it like for you? See, we met in the middle. I, I didn't push it. And we learned to have this wonderful thing. This is an art that people need to learn. You've got to stop trying to arm wrestle everybody into believing what we believe. 
and then start honoring them. And, and the Lord will do it. Find something good in them. Read John 147, I believe it is, that area where, where uh, Jesus goes to Nathaniel. And he says, here's an honest man, one in whom there's nothing false. You know, and he builds him up. He calls him honest. He builds him up. Read John 4 when Jesus encounters the Samaritan woman at the well. He builds her up. He calls her honest, even though she had a weird lifestyle. We need to learn how to do this. And it, it's an art form. But as you do that, we'll answer your question, Debbie, Deborah, is that as you do that, uh, then people will start to trust you and start to open up. Many people don't don't want to be around us because we've burned the bridges. We've, we haven't built the bridge. We burned the bridge. Jesus is the bridge. He is. And we need to, to do what he did and, and not judge people. Anyway, let me get off my soapbox now. Thank you. Here's um, another question from Stacy. I don't know if it's the same Stacy or different Stacy. How do you, how do you keep from being discouraged when you're waiting on God and his timing? I have been uh, job hunting now for two months. So, well, uh, I'm uh, answering your question, how to stop being discouraged? Well, believe and trust the Lord for it. I know it sounds trite, right? But here's what you do. Get some verses that you can decree or pray to the Lord. Because uh, Job says, if you decree a thing, it shall be done. So it gives you something to do in the meantime while you're waiting for God to open the door. Anytime I'm waiting for God to open the door, I'm always doing something so that you're never just sitting there discouraged. You'll want to be proactive. This is the Matthew 7, 7 door I was just talking about. Ask, seek, and knock. That doesn't say sit on the couch and wait for the door to open. I'm not saying that you're sitting on the couch by any means. I'm saying this, you won't get discouraged if you become part of the proactive process that you're going through right now. So find some Bible verses that you can pray that, you know, whatever, can you can Google it. Bible verses I can pray for my job or to find a new job. I'm, believe me, there's plenty of them out there. As you begin to pray this and ask, and pray Matthew 7, 7 every day. Lord, I'm asking, I'm seeking, I'm knocking, open the door. Then as you do that, if you want to even get more proactive, take communion each day. Do some things proactive. It'll break discouragement off because now you're working hand in hand with the Lord. If you get yourself into a place, you know, where especially losing your job, I'm really sorry. Wow. Um, I want to say this is that I've seen people say, you know, they, they <clears throat> either quit their job or they lost their job. And I said, well, what are you going to do? They said, well, I'm just going to hang out with the Lord. I go, well, do you have a plan for that? No, if you don't, it's not a good idea unless you have a plan or you've been called by the Lord because the enemy will discourage you. Unless you have a specific plan to do something like that, you don't want to get back in the workplace or, or in the community because that's where people are. That's where the people are that we need to reach. And uh, anyway, this is one thing I'm a firm believer in is that we need to become the light of the world and be the light in the world. And so really, Stacy, I'm sorry that you're going through this job hunt for two years. Let's say, God, let's go do it, Lord. Give Stacy that job. Give her the strategy in Jesus' name. Natalie has this question. How can you tell the difference between the supernatural and the occult or the mystical? Actually, it's pretty easy. One is has a source from God through the Holy Spirit and the Bible. And the other does not have that. It doesn't have the... Um, an example, I came out of the occult years ago. I mean, back in the 70s and 80s, I was in the occult and in the mysticism. And now, when I came into the kingdom of God, there's a huge difference. This difference is the source. So in the occult, you see a psychic. In the kingdom of God, in the, in the Bible, you'll see a prophet. What's the difference? What, you can ask a psychic who, who's their spirit guide. They will tell you their spirit guide. That's their source you know, it's Lord Sheba or whatever. They'll, they'll just tell you their source. If you ask the prophetic person, then their source is the Holy Spirit and the Bible. Like me, I had to get cleaned up. Uh, at this point, I had to get cleaned up. And now my source is the Bible. When I do dream interpretation, that's supernatural. 
that is different than the occult. Now, there is a Bible verse that there's just one, actually, that says that about that the people who don't believe in it, you know, use against us uh, who are prophetic. And and they said that it's a Jeremiah verse that says that the there's the prophets are false and they're seeing false. That was a prophet who said that, you know, I mean, there was a that was a prophet that said that very verse. In other words, we need to be able to hear the Lord in Genesis 41 uh, Genesis 40, verse 8, um, Joseph said, Do not interpretations belong to the Lord. Tell me your dream. Others in, in Egypt had told had been trying to operate with dream interpretation but hadn't been able to interpret it because there was the interpretation that belonged to the Lord. So get grounded, Natalie. Get grounded in the Lord. Read the Bible. Uh, maybe read some of my books. I've got a book, Understand Your Dreams Now, or... Uh, you know, God spoke now, but these are smaller books that'll help you and stay tuned to this and learn to discern the difference because there's a counterfeit. Satan will counterfeit the Lord. He cannot create. In fact, the word creation is it in the Old Testament. It's called bara. That's a uh, Hebrew word for create. It's something from nothing. It's never mentioned around Satan or the occult. And Satan can only counterfeit what was already created. He was actually created by God. And so he counterfeits the things of the Lord. So we need to go on that discovery and learn to discern. If you want to, we do this, in fact, in my school, my online school, it's called Hearing the Voice of God 365. I'm not trying to push it. I'm just trying to say, I go through details on this. How to know if a word is from yourself, your soul, the enemy or other people. How to know if it's if it's from the soul of someone else. How to know the difference between psychics and prophets. I go through this and train you to learn to discern so that you can step into what God has you. I feel a call on your life, Natalie. And God's calling you to this, but there's been some negative voices around you. Just knock those away and go for God. Here's a question from Linda. How do I break the curses on the calling uh, on our calling of our book of life? Well, that's a good question. And uh, that's what we're going to be covering in our webinar this month is um, when we're talking about angels and demons, you know, releasing God's blessings and breaking the curses, uh, the devil's curses, is um, first of all, you'll need to learn to discern what your generational curses are. There are some of them because it's usually the opposite of the calling or you'll see it like when I look back years ago before I understood this, I look back and I see alcoholism. I see divorce uh, in my in drug addiction. I see the occult in my generational line. You know, in other words, my family, we were into that type of thing. But I tell you, that's a good sign because those four things I just mentioned, the opposite of those, the opposite is what God wants to release the occult he wants to, because my family was in the occult. I was for a long time. I came out in the 80s. And he wants to release the opposite, which is the supernatural side of God. If uh, if it's divorce that's in your life, he it's because that's the generational curse, because the generational blessing is a sound marriage and to help other people and have family. It's a powerful thing. Uh, maybe that there's drug addiction. Well, you know, the opposite of that is actually the bliss and the glory of God. There really is good stuff in the kingdom. So, again, I can't really uh, explain it really quickly, except that make a list of the things that you see attacks in your life. Ask God to show you the opposite it would be one way to start. Or sign up for the, um, the uh, Angels and Demons uh, online training we're doing the month of October, and that might help you. Here's one from Ronnie, and Ronnie says, I've been praying for years for a spouse. God has answered all other prayers that I am. Uh, am I doing something wrong? Well, I don't know if you are. I don't, can't sense that you are. I, you know, uh, God's timing right now, you know, is it, there is a time right now we're stepping into. I don't know your situation. If you're, some people just pray and they don't do anything. I know that there's two different beliefs on this. You, you just pray and ask God to bring it. I'm a firm believer that happened in my life is that's not all for everyone. Some people that might work for, but some people like me, I had to go out and I had, I had a date and I had to do things because I had brokenness. 
I had been divorced. There was divorce of my family. So I didn't know what, uh, what a healthy relationship looked like. So I got planted in a good church. You know what I did? I went over to people's, uh, I actually didn't tell them this, but I liked, there was a couple of families that I thought were really cool. You know, they were married, they had kids, they were cool. And so I went over for dinner with them and started observing. And I was observing. I, I wanted to understand that. And so I dated. And then what I, when I dated, I, because I was in a bad situation before, I dated uh, with, um, with accountability and things like that. That's how I met my wife, Linda. We've been married 22 years now. And I tell you, I, had, I did those things. So I don't know if you're doing that or not. I don't know to answer your question. I don't know if God is waiting, keeping you saved, like some of the people I saw, like the end time marriages that are coming up, they've been saved for it. I'm just saying, start to ask, seek, and knock. Grab hold of it. Grab hold of this for this season. Get some communion. It's what I do. Use some Bible verses. Just a couple of them. That's all you need. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask God to show you the mysteries of what of your marriage. And that's all. Just begin to worship and ask Him. And see if it breaks open for you. And everybody else as well who might be going through this. My, okay, Judy. My suffering has been painful. Uh, first of all, I'm really sorry, Judy. It's a, a tough to be in that situation. So Judy said, I want to give up, but I'm not sure <clears throat> what my calling is anymore. Well, the first of all, the word for now, don't give up. The enemy has come in like a flood. The Lord is releasing a new standard right now. And so some of the generational curses that might be against your book opening right now, you forgot what your calling was, that might be the book that has the generational curse that needs to be broken of suicide, of hopelessness. So right now, Lord, I repent, renounce, and break generationally all the way back to Adam and Eve. I break the generational curse of suicide. Lord, break it now off my life. Renounce this. Break every demon, every curse of suicide. Go through all the things that you're struggling with right now and see if your book of life doesn't open with you, for you. I'm telling you, when you grab a hold, the most powerful thing, the Bible, get some Bible verses and communion and worship. I put on Pandora or Amazon worship and every day I grab a hold of communion. I have my Bible. People ask me, you know, uh, how I've been able to go do what I do, you know. I start having heavenly encounters. Well, I tell you, I'm not doing anything different than I did 10 years ago or maybe even more. I have a quiet time. I pray. I put on worship music. I, um, you know, I, I have these things. I might do more sometimes or less. Uh, and the only thing different is I've added communion. But that was after things. But one day in 2016, that's before I added communion, one day in 2016, a window or a door opened in heaven and I began to see things in a greater way. Now that doesn't matter. What you want to do is keep doing it every single day. And if you don't know how to do it, how I started years, years ago, I, in fact, I just Googled this recently to see if it was on there or not. The Navigators, that's a, that's a group. They, the Navigators, actually someone from my church back when I was 20, I think I came into the kingdom uh, when I first came to Jesus for the second time, I was 20 years old. It was 1980, I think, or 21. And the navigators at my church, they were someone who was a navigator. They, they did a, a course with me. And we just went over someone's house. It was fun. And it was called 2-7. It was, it was based on, uh, I, I think it was uh, Philippians 2-7. I can't remember because that was the... But it was, it was rooted in building, uh, build up in him and strengthened in your faith. And so it walked me through, and you can get it on Amazon right now. It walk you through this, the basics, scripture memorization. Number one, how to have a quiet time, how to pray, how to actually make a prayer list, how to um, uh, share the gospel. Those were the four basic things that it taught you. And then you could do it in a group or do it by yourself. Even if you grab some of it, I wasn't good at I still am not good at the scripture memorization. But I tell you, something new is going to open over you or if anyone needs that type of training go ahead and check that out hey everybody you know what it's just been such a good time that uh, I'm gonna have to uh, wrap it up here so Lord we pray right now in Jesus name 
for those who are struggling, those who need the drink right now, those who need the book open, show us if, it, if there's anything that Satan doesn't want us to see about our book of life. Lord, we pray right now that you would open the heavens over us. I pray for supernatural encounters that's going to take place even over the next week, couple weeks, being able to understand dreams and visions. Get us through this time, Lord. And I ask now that you would increase this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Remember, DougAddison.com, and you can sign up for my uh, for my uh, online training up until midnight Thursday. It's called Angels and Demons, uh, Releasing Blessings and Breaking Curses. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks to my Enlight team. See you soon.